Good morning, folks. We're going to look at some x-ray eye candy in space. We're going to review some issues with polar sea ice and take a peek at where it should be wetter versus drier in the years ahead. But we are starting with the last 24 hours on our star. There were a few minor flaring events, but nothing major. The sunspot number remains high as the departing active regions are replaced with new ones at the incoming limb. It's the brightness on the left side. We also have a few notable plasma filaments that are about to be facing Earth as we head through the weekend and into next week. You may be able to better pick those out, the thin dark ropes of plasma, here in 304 angstroms, as well as delineate where the bright sunspots are. Eruptive activity has thankfully been low, but the potential is there in abundance. Let's go to our eye candy, where sometimes the x-ray signatures are where you expect them to be, sometimes they are not. The background is the optical, the visible light range, and the two images on the left have their x-ray sources where you might expect around the brightest objects and the clusters, but that's not the case for the two images on the right. This not only helps us know where to look for more information, but it tells us where we should be pointing devices like the infrared instruments on James Webb. Up next, folks, it was not long ago that we looked at the melt-driven cooling and freshening of the Antarctic waters and saw how they increased sea ice in the south, and we said that that was also happening on the north. Well, here, they're describing the more seasonal extent of that phenomenon in the north, meaning that the summer melts are strong in the Arctic, but in winter time, that extra fresh, cool water more easily freezes, and indeed, the winter recoveries in the Arctic have been enormous for more than a decade. Lastly here, folks, the next few years in the lead-up to the more extreme changes due to the geomagnetic excursion will greatly impact readiness and crop production up until that zenith of the event. And they have shown where things are expected to be wetter and drier across the world. The extreme red and blue are where super floods and super droughts are more expected. What you'd hope to see for your area is the light blue color. That would be the best for your local farmers, like we see in Colorado. Link to all these are below so you can take a better look. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.